พลังนะครับการเชียร์กันการลุ้นกันออกเสียงออกท่าทางได้วันนี้มาให้เต็มมันต้องอย่างนั้นฉะนั้นเริ่มงานยามเดียวเริ่มแล้วครับที่มวยคู่แรกดีกว่าพบกันในพิกัดน้ําหนัก72กิโลกรัมนะครับคนแรกมาจากอิหร่านโอ้โหคนนี้พลังหมัดคือทีเด็ดนะครับฉะนั้นต้องเตรียมนาฬิกาปลุกไว้เยอะๆทำไมฮะอาจจะหลับไม่รู้ตัวถ้ายังยังไม่ตื่นต้องใช้นาฬิกาปลุกคนนี้ฉะนั้นขอเสียงต้อนรับครับเดอะบัสุก้าบอยฮามิสโซไลมาเดมาด้วยเพลงที่ดุเดือดเลยนะครับตอนนี้โอ้ยเรียกได้ว่าคิ้วหูเต้นระบำเลยมาคู่แรกคนนี้ผมคัดมาแล้วนะครับครับเหลือนี่คู่ต่อสู้เขาจะเป็นใครครับคนเดียวคนคนนี้เนี่ยนะฮะเป็นนักสู้ขาลุยจากจังหวัดสุรินทร์นะครับไม่เคยกลัวใครยังไงขาลุยและแขนหลับแล้วฮะแขนตั้งกาไปด้วยไปด้วยพร้อมด้วยพร้อมด้วยกันคนนี้อาวุธครบเครื่องนะครับจะเตะจะหมัดเดี๋ยวดูกันแล้วกันว่าอาจจะมีทำให้อีกฝ่ายหนึ่งจุกจิกกวนใจก่อนจะปล่อยหมัดเด็ดอะไปลุยกันเลยครับนี่คือพยักษ์เรนสุขสวัสดิ์แสนบรกตสุขสวัสดิ์แสงบรกตพยักษ์เรนประเทศไทยThere you can see our first fighter of the evening, Hamed Soleimani, otherwise known as the Bazooka Boy, 23 years old from Iran. 35 victories with 22 losses. Sorry, 22 victories, 11 losses, and two draws. This fight, our first fight of the evening, is at 72 kilograms. Hamed Soleimani. And here we go, introducing his opponent, finding out the black corner. He goes by the name of Suksawat Sang Marigot. His real name is Suksawat Motdi. 21 years of age, 176 centimeters tall, fighting out of Surin in the northeastern part of Thailand. He has a total of 62 fights, 46 victories, 14 losses, and two draws. Doesn't have a nickname like the Bazooka Boy, though, Kevin, unfortunately. No, he doesn't. 
he does have a tight nickname, but I don't really know how to translate that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys and girls, welcome to Lampang province. We're here for Thai fight Langpang. It's one of the provinces in northern Thailand. Lampang has different types of places for you to visit. Forests, waterfalls, hot springs, dams, caves, and also ancient, sorry, ancient sites of Lana architecture. We're here at Wat Patet Lampang Luang, special temple of the Lampang people. It is regarded as the most beautiful temple of Lana. It is also considered one of the most beautiful wooden sanctuaries in Thailand. Also, there is an ancient jetty, jetty built with Lana style art, and it is the place where Buddha's relics are enshrined, Kevin. Fantastic. Um, it's lovely to be here, of course, and of course, the Wat Pratat Lampang Luang, beautiful temple. Yeah, stunning. Love to have it in the background, as you see there on uh, Suk Sawat screen there. Absolutely magnificent. And of course, this fight is a Kacha Muay Thai style fight. Indeed. Rope and hands, boys and girls. Of course, for those uh, history buffs out there, we could actually track the Kachuk back to the 16th or the 1600s in back to the Utia Kingdom. Simon de la Lubre, of course, wrote it in his journal in his visit in the Utia provinces or the Utia Kingdom, excuse me. And that's why you're here, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys and girls. First fight of the evening in the white corner from Iran. We have Hamed Soleimani. Of course, in the red, Suksawat Sang Morikot. And as we know from the catch hook fights, they do not tend to last long. Left hook attempt there from Soleimani. You can see the stage has changed as well here at Tight Fight. They've improved. Looks fantastic. Actually, it's great to see. As you see, Suksawat, they're already going for some heavy blows early on. And that's what we like to see here in Tight Fight. Huge hits early on. A beautiful low kicks there thrown by Hamid Soleimani. Oh, good right high, high kick by Soleimani, but a right hat hook then came in from Suksawan. I don't believe we've seen either fighters here at the Thai Fight Stadium here before. But already making a huge impression early on in the fight. Well, a kick once again from Suksawan, but Hamid counters. Oh, good body shot there. Rip the body of the bazooka boy, and I think that stung him, Kevin. That hurt. I believe you can hear that shot from the Lampang City Center. My goodness. Suksawat now moving in, cornering Soleimani, looking for that high kick. Definitely looks like he's in control early on in the fight. Now that Soleimani perhaps already needs to do something different in the fight. Swinging right hand there from Soleimani, but I still think that body shot, that kick took the wind out of his sails and he's, he's still struggling a little bit it seems. Oh absolutely, and just look at him, mouth wide open, cornered up, taking shots from, uh, from uh, Suksawat. started this fight really early in it. It's fair to say he's trying to make an impression here in Thai fight. You've got to do that in your first fight here in Thai fight. Absolutely. Especially if we're to get called back onto the show. Oh, another swing and a miss there. Why not target the body though? You know that it's open. You know it's vulnerable. It worked for him there, but I mean, perhaps oh. he's just trying to catch his opponent by surprise. Oh, another elbow there from Soleimani. And another big kick there from Suksawan. What a kick. And another one just dodging that, Hamid Soleimani. You said it, Kevin. His mouth's wide open right now. He's exhausted. Elbows <laughs> coming in from Suksawan. And he's stuck into the corner once again. He, he needs to stop making that a habit because, of course, the judges here at the Thai Fight Arena, they prefer fighters to move forward, keep on attacking. They don't like oh. you to be cornered up or back into the corners. Back to the center of the ring they go. Suksawan desperately looking for that high head kick. Why not target the body, Suksawan? Start going for it. He's oh! just going to tell him, what a shot there to the chin. Caught him with that left hand, but Soleimani took it. Took it well. Oh, right hand kick. How did Suksawa stay up from that? Or maybe not for long. Hamid now changing the tone of the fight. My goodness. That's all it takes in Muay Thai. Exactly, especially in a Kachuk fight. Indeed. And if you don't know what a Kachuk is, his ropes bounce through your hands. Another swing and a miss there from Suksawa. Hamid could have made Suksawan pay there with that shot. Going for the body now. That's the end of the first round. Electrifying atmosphere here at Thai Fight Lampang. Good showing from both fighters really in that opening round. Suksawan was the fighter that was pushing forward and probably won the round by doing that. But 
don't write Soleimani off just yet. He caught him with some good elbows. But for me, the shot of that round was a left body kick. It kind of just sapped all the air out of Soleimani. And from that point on, he looked like he was tired. Oh, beautiful shot. Absolutely. Just as you said, Aaron, I mean, it looked like Suksawa was definitely in control of that round. But then, of course, Ahmed Soleimani did have his moments of brilliance. We can't deny that at all. Two debutants. Starting off this evening's tie fight, what a great job they're doing so far. It's not an easy task at all, but here we go. Round two. You know, I'm not a, I am not don't think I heard what the cornerman actually said, but judging by the body language, I think I saw both cornermen tell the fighters to go for the body. So oh, stunning right hook there from Suksawan. Tell you what, Soleimani has got a cheer on him. Absolutely, he plays that shot really well, Suksawan. Most fighters go down from that, but not Hamid Soleimani. He stayed up from that. That didn't seem faith by it at all, did he? There's that body shot again. And that's actually where he struggled. I mean, he, he has a, a real good oh, chin. Good left hand. Another left hand that snuck through there and caught the chin again of Soleimani, but he didn't take it. Fantastic chin. I mean, but the body is a different story, isn't it? I mean, from what we saw so far, every time he takes a shot, just oh. like that. Just like that. Seems he's like he's reacted differently to that. Oh, and he's obviously been listening to the corner, Kevin. <laughs> just <laughs> like you said. Hands down now from Soleimani, you can see that covering That's the right side of the side. body. I mean, when he starts covering the body, then his oh. face is exposed. Almost caught him to the head there. That could have been lights out either way, any shot to the head. And doing a much better job now blocking the body, Hamid Soleimani. He's got no choice. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But like you said, Kevin, your hands down, all you're thinking about is protecting the body. It leaves the head wide open. Absolutely. What a beautiful oh. body shot once again. Now, I'm not sure if you can see it on the, on the cameras, but on the right side of Hamid Soleimani, that's, <laughs> that body started to turn red. You start to mistake it for a fire hydrant. <laughs> Slow down drastically now, Hamid Soleimani, when you should really be pushing the face of this fight right now. Oh! Again, he jumped in to try and attack and got caught with three beautiful counter strikes. Another body shot there from Suksawan. And it's obvious that he's going to keep going back to it again and again and again. And if it's working for you, why not keep going for what's working for you? Almost in a stalemate, these two fighters right now. At the end of the day, I think it's who's got more in the tank. Soleimani's not done a bad job on the right side of Suksawat's leg. He has targeted a few times and caught him. Yeah, absolutely. He's doing a much better job blocking in, in the second round as opposed to the first. <laughs> Definitely the fighter's corner told him a, to do. There's a little bit of a welt under the left eye now of Soleimani also. So there's that right or left side of the body of Soleimani and the welt as well on the, on the eyes. Second round. More of the same in that second round. So, so I was the one who was taking the fight to Soleimani. Soleimani was desperately trying to find some counter shots, but truth be told, he was running into his own set of problems with those counter shots by Suksawat. So a, a comfortable couple of rounds has to be said for Suksawat, so but hey, you never know with Kachuk. Soleimani has to go for it in this third round, and if he does so, and if he does connect with those roped hands, anything can happen. Exactly, and that's, that's how the chat check has changed everything about Muay Thai. Yeah, indeed. It's almost like a different sport. Yeah, <laughs> you got to say, I mean, with chat check, it's more focused on the hands, really, and, but <laughs> not in this case, perhaps, so what, having a lot of success with the kicks. Got to wonder what Hamid could do different in this round to change the pace of the fight. And more of the same oh. from Suksa Wat, going with the kicks, attacking the oh, body. Oh, swinging right hand there from Soleimani connects. Oh, good uppercut. Beautiful hands there from Soleimani. He knows everything's on the line right now. If he wants to win this fight, he's got to go for it. He's got to throw everything. But the whatever Hamid's corner told him, they told him the right thing because he's coming in swinging now, trying to knock oh, the body. Oh, he got caught with that body shot. That's the risk that you have to take. A beautiful he, combination there from Suksa Wat. You've got to take some to give some. I mean, that's the name of the game. Once again, the same story as the first and the second round. So, so what now pushing Hamid back into the corner again. It's almost like Soleimani's trying to find that perfect time to unleash the bazooka. Exactly. 
And of course, we saw it in the beginning of the round, and we see that quite often. I mean, after fighters having their rest, and they think they're invincible there. But the first 30 seconds, after that, who knows what happened next. Again to the body, and a deep breath by Soleimani once again. Yeah, he's breathing heavily oh, now, isn't again. he? He's been breathing heavily since the first round. <laughs> That's fair after, to say, yeah. After that first, first kick to the body, and again! He's Look at that them. perfect camera angle to see the welts, the markings on the right side of Soleimani's body. And that's going to sting in the shower tomorrow. I don't care who you are. Oh, and again, just under the elbow. Good right hand, though, from Soleimani. Still there. He's definitely still in the fight. I mean, he showed that he could display these uh, really hard power shots that could really change something in the fight. So Suksawan, he should always be careful in the ring. He's had his hands down right now. Maybe that's not the blindest of ideas. No. See this. Oh, good of a cut. Beautiful. And just like that, that could have changed the fight. That could have really changed the fight. I mean, his opponent had to be really... That would, had to be careful there. That, oh, that would have rattled a few brain cells for sure. But again, look at that hand. How far down it is trying to protect that body. Six of one, he's not even bothering going up to the head now. He's just... Body, 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 body. I mean, just so you know, for kickboxing fans, if you... <laughs> If the kick hits your arm, it doesn't count as a block. Yeah. <laughs> Not in Muay Thai anyways. I mean, how many times have we seen people take kicks to the arm and punk it to the fight after that? There's no sense of urgency from Solomon right now. It's almost like he's waiting for Suksawa to attack first in order to draw a counter. Yeah. Of course, the time is ticking now, and now Ahmed Soleimani is the one moving forward. End of the third and final round. Good opening bout here at Thai Fight Lampang, but of course, we will go to the judges' scorecards for a decision. Stay with us, folks. สำหรับคู่แรกวันนี้ที่ไทยไฟลำปางครับครับและสำหรับผู้ชนะวันนี้ The Winner is ไทยยักษ์เสด็จสุขสวัสดิ์แสงมรกตจากไทยเลย Congratulations to the debutants here at Thai Fight Stay with us folks The female fight is up next Congratulations สุขสวัสดิ์แสงมรกตพบกันในพิกัดน้ำหนัก53กิโลกรัมครับคนแรกยอดมวยหญิงจากกรุงเทพมหานครครับความสวยที่แฝงด้วยความดุและก็เดือดขอเสียงต้อนรับดอกบัวมหาการเพชรโรชาลูกซ้ายกองเด
พชรสโรชาชื่อหวานมากครับแต่ว่าจะส่งของข่าวนะฮะไม่รู้ว่าข่าวเลื่อนหรือเปล่าให้กับคู่ต่อสู้หรือเปล่าเอาเอางี้ดีกว่ามาครับผมเดี๋ยวมาลุยกันเลยดีกว่านะครับดูจากการออกสักกาหมัดเข่าศอกแล้วดูเดือดทีเดียวนะครับจะต้องมาเจอกับคนคนนี้นะครับนี่คือนักชกหญิงแกล่งจากเมียนมานะครับเธอชอบจับศอกเป็นอาวุธข่าวแล้วฮะอาจจะมวยศอกเจอกันนะครับในวันนี้ปรบมือโดยนางต้อนรับด้วยนะครับสาวแกล่งรุ่มสารวินเวโรนิกาIt's a bit of a strange thing to see. I'm introducing the Thai fire in the white outfit. Petsora Shah looks like Gong Din. 25 years of age from Bangkok, Thailand, 170 centimeters tall. This fight will take place at 53 kilograms with a professional record of 121 fights, 81 victories, 25 losses, and 15 draws. She was a replacement for Nongbo, Nongbo, Nongbo. That's right. Who was a replacement for Morgan, Morgan Manfredi? <laughs> Soros Manfredi. Manfredi <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Yeah. So Manfredi, remember the last really, name. Really, really appreciate the fact that she is here, and that is her opponent, Kevin. Take it away. And now, Juice, the fighter fighting out of the black corner. She goes by the name of Vero Nika, 25 years of age, 164 centimeters tall, fighting out of Mobai in Shan State, Myanmar. Her professional fight record: 29 fights. 10 wins, 2 losses, and 17 draws. 17 draws? 17 draws, exactly, because she was a left way fighter. In left way, if you don't knock out your opponent, you don't win. So the match ends without anyone getting knocked out. It's a draw in traditional left way rules anyways. But and, and in left way, it's traditional just to use tapes or rope hands. Absolutely, I mean, the catch hook shouldn't be a big problem for That's Barrow. That was my point, indeed. Exactly, it shouldn't be a big problem at all. Um, and also, Vero, she's good with her hands. She's fought boxing before as well, as left way and now Muay Thai. I believe yeah. it's her first Kachuk fight, though. Yeah, and the first time at Thai fight. Let's see if she's she can make a big really introduction. She's been doing really well on the uh, Muay Thai scene recently, beating uh, Dong Kang Fa. 
Tang Gong Fa, of course, she, she beat her once, but uh, a lot would argue that she should have got the first one as well. It was very close indeed. Absolutely. All right, boys and girls, second fight of the evening and our only female fight of the evening. In the white corner from Thailand, Pet Sorasha, Luksai Gong Din. And in the black corner, Veronika from Myanmar, Shan State. You could imagine how excited the fans in Myanmar are for this one here. Vera, of course, having a big name there. And if I could say hello in all the 50 dialects, 50, 60 dialects, I think <laughs> I would do that right now. You know what? I'm not even going to try one. I think I'd butcher it. <laughs> and a big oh. start already from the fighter in the white corner, Pet Sarocha. And already Nika trying to Nico knock her on in. early on. My goodness. No headbutts, though, please. Oh, no, thank you. But that's the sort of fight we expect from Vero. She tries to go in there and knock her opponent out really early. Nice body shots there from the Burmese fighter. And again, going on top. Pet Sarasha is going to do everything from the back foot, it seems. I mean, I, wouldn't like to, I don't want to say that Pet Sarasha is in trouble now, but if she keeps fighting the same way she's doing right now, perhaps she might be in trouble later on in the fight. She pretty much set the tone for the whole round, didn't she, with that front seat to the face. Oh! Now she goes with just, just a slip. Could say that the referee might be very kind to Pet Sarocha there right now, but not anymore as he goes down again. Yeah, good body shot and then a good right hand coming in from Vero. He trains out of Tiger Muay Thai as we can. That's right, and her opponent, of course, training out of Luksai Gongdin, which is a huge Muay Thai family there. I believe Mr. and Mrs. Luksai Gongdin has 16 children. Every single one of them has or does still fight Muay Thai. My goodness. Actually, we've got seen Ada here at Thai Fight before. Ada Luksai Gongdin. And uh, Sangha Tin. Uh, Sangha Tin, of course, in the corner of Pit Sarocha right now. WBA Asia champion. Oh, there's a well over the top. You see right on the top of the floor. Oh, good head kick there. A huge bump there from, from Pet Sarocha. Girls are giving everything they've got in this open ground. Really fast pace. And for those that are asking, can Vera go on like this? Yes, she can. Oh, good hand there. Pet Sarocha in a little bit of trouble here. She's trying to hold on. Oh, those body shots are lethal. Absolutely lethal. Pet Sarocha needs to do a much better oh, job of covering up. Almost walked into that head kick. Spinning back elbow attempt. Vero just walks right through it and again targets the body. End of round one. Woo! Absolutely amazing, going forward each time. Just heavy hands going for the body as well. You gotta wonder, what can hit Sarocha do in the second round? Well, we heard in the corner, didn't we? We heard a brother tell us that he won't go to that high kicks. Because one of them, could, I think she was watching Carl a couple of times for those left kicks, so. He did, I mean. a bit more venom behind them. Two things we heard, more left kicks and keep your guard up. And that's very important, especially against a fighter like Vero. Here we go, second round getting started now. Would it be more of the same in the second round? There's that left high kick. <laughs> Listening to her brother. Right away. Good left hand though from Vero. It's just it's like a Terminator. She just moves forward, moves forward. She doesn't care what any, anything you throw at her. You said it right. She's just like the Terminator. Perhaps you need to call it the Shan Terminator because that's all she's doing. Moving forward, taking shots and giving oh. them back again. Beautiful dodge there from yeah. Head Tower Chad. And again, good head movement. She's gonna get really tight and she has to keep on doing that. Oh. Beautiful hands once again from Vero. She's trying to end this fight early, let's be honest here. She yes, just wants to go home, leave her opponent in the ring, collect her checks, and make a name for herself in exactly. Thailand and in Myanmar. I mean, she's so far so good. We've only seen no oh, elbows coming in. We've only seen one round and a half so far, and I've got to tell you, I want to see Vero back on Thai Fight already. <laughs> Maybe a certain pet G jar would be uh, interested in that. Oh, they're the same weight. 53 kilos, perhaps. Maybe we could make it, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, elbows raining in there from the Burmese fighter. I've got to say, I do love these body shots. Rare, it's very rare that you actually see a Thai fighter throw a lot of body punches. 
I'll tell you who's good at body coaches. Pet G-Jones. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> now that's a dream fight. Yeah. Isn't it? Pet G-Jones versus Vera right now. I mean, Vera has a wonderful fight yet. This is our first time seeing her in the Muay Thai ring in Thai fight. And she's looking great. What can you say? Pet Sarotan, she doesn't know what to do with there. She's moving back. Almost on survival mode in a way. Beautiful low kick there from Vero. And the body punches. I mean, we see that quite a lot in left way. She brought yes. the left way style to the Kachuk Muay Thai fight. Now still moving back. Bentarocha. You gotta wonder if she tried to tire Vero out. End of round two. More of the same here at Thai Fight Lampine. corner there or her brother telling her um, more jabs and more kicks I'm not sure if that's gonna yeah you can see there's a few the welts on the top of that forehead now I mean any person in the woman division right now you know they, they're gonna be put on notice Vero yeah. moving forward Pet Sarasha trying to control the distance with that left kick trying to keep her away but here comes Vero again Try to keep her in the clinch. You see there, after she put her in the clinch, no shots came in, huh? Back up into the corner again, though, Pet Sarasha. That's what you want to be, especially against someone like Vero. Good defense. Keep up that Pet Sarasha. Pet Sarasha. Of course, the knees that score the most are the knees that go straight down the middle, the piercing knees. Missed with a low kick there. Great shot there, throw oh. a huge elbow there from Vero, the fighter from the Shan State in Myanmar. Good elbows there from Vero. Trying to put an exclamation point on this fight, trying to stop her, her Thai opponent. Ordering Pet Sawacha again and again and again. That's what Vero does. She tries to absolutely dismantle their opponent. Dismantle her opponent, excuse me. And once again, Pet Sawacha in the corner. Not really sure what. She has to do now in the fight. Once again, moving to another corner as Vera continuously stalks her opponent. Vera surely thinks she's got this one in the back, but she still wants it. Beautiful, beautiful left hook and a right body shot from Vera. Continuously just stalking her opponent. But I've got to say, Pep Sarasha has done a lot better in this third round, especially when defending and controlling the distance. And Vero's not finding very easy to find that target like they did in the first and the second round. A nice left kick there, and that's the end of the fight. End of the third and final round, we will go to the judge scorecard for the second time this evening. Crazy, tie fight, how's that happen? <laughs> ให้เห็นกันในหลายรูปแบบทีเดียวคู่นี้ใช่ครับซึ่งบอกเลยนะฮะมันจริงๆนะฮะมวยหญิงก็มันไม่แพ้มวยไทยขนาดคนภาคของ
มันมันใช่ไหมมันมันสะใจจริงฉะนั้นก็โอเคถึงเวลาประกันผลนะฮะหลายหลายคนที่ดูกันมา3ยกกันมาผู้ชนะของคู่นี้ได้แก่ใครดีครับใครดีขาวหรือดำ The winner is Congratulations to the debutant Vero here at Thai Fight. Boy, boy, เดินแล้วก็อาวุธหนักมากทีเดียวใช่ฮะรู้ตัวก็เร็วจริงนายส่วนน้องสาวชาวไทยเราก็พยายามที่จะหาจังหวะจากทางแล้ว。ขอต้อนรับนะจิ้งจอกเลสไซวาลิสออนมาเดจิ้งจอกเทเลสไตล์คนนี้หลายๆคนให้เป็นแฟนไทยไฟเนี่ยต้องคุณหน้าคุณตาเขาเขาเคยขึ้นมาชกบนเวทีไทยไปแล้ววันนี้บอกเลยว่าฝีมือไม่ธรรมดาผลงานไม่ธรรมดาทุกคนนะครับฉายาจิ้งจอกดูว่านิสัยของจิ้งจอกเป็นยังไงนะครับมีเหลี่ยมความดุนะครับแล้วก็สามารถที่จะทำลายตัวสู้ได้ทุกจังหวะจริงครับแต่แต่มาผู้ต่อสู้ต้องมาครับนักชกชาวไทยคนนี้นะครับห่างหายจากเวทีไทยไฟไปนานพอสมควรแต่ไม่เคยห่างหายจากการฝึกซ้อมมาดูว่าจะเป็นยังไงหวนกลับมาในครั้งนี้ฟอร์มมาเต็มความอึดมานแน่นนะครับสไตล์ของเขาเนี่ยนะครับคือเป็นสไตล์ลุยนะครับอาวุธหนักเลยนะครับปรบมือต้อนรับด้วยนี่คือพยักหน้ามนสมึกเดชแสงบอลกอดThere you can see Walid Otmani, 33-year-old from Algeria, 180 centimeters tall. This fight taking place at 70 kilograms. He has a professional record of 60 fights. 
37 victories with 20 losses and three draws. Walid Otmani from Algeria. <laughs> We're going by what the MC just said. And of course, uh, we've seen Walid here in Thai Five before, and we know, and of course, he knows what's expected of him in the ring here today. And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the black corner. He goes by the name of Subing Dead, Sang Morikot, or Subing Dead, Lukja Parong Tom, or Subing Dead, Dead Fai Fa, same person. 25 years of age, 176 centimeters tall, fighting out of Pachuap, Kiri Khan Province. He has a total of 153 fights, 112 victories, 37 losses, and four draws. Yeah, been a while since we've seen Slamming Dead. But every single time we do see Slamming Dead, he does put on a show. I actually think the last time we saw him, he got knocked out in Phuket. And it was on the, uh, when we did the King's Cup show, the final of the King's Cup. Oh, wow. Yeah. So he's definitely going to want to come back from Retribution that Retribution time. Oh, yes. And it's a bit weird. I'm pretty sure there might be a glitch in the system, but... No knockout so far, two fights. I know, it's true. <laughs> and of course, the people of Lampang, they want to see a knockout. The viewers watching at home want to see a knockout as well. Well, we still have a lot of fights to come, including, of course, the main event this evening. Sanchai, PK Sanchai Muay Thai Gym will be adorning the Thai fight ring for the first time in 2022. And yes, he'll be taking on Israel's Max Brannis. Max Brannis, of course, captured a lot of victories on the Channel 8 Muay Thai programs, Super Champ and Hardcore. But of course, it's a big step up to face the living legend, Sanchai, isn't it? Just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys and girls. Third fight of the evening in the white corner from Algeria, Walid Otmani. And then in the black corner from Thailand, Sabing Dead, Sang Morikot. I believe it's the first time he's used the Sang Morikot name. Of course, viewers at home may remember him as Something that looked at Parong Tom or something that that Fai Fa. Or they might not remember him at all. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't knocked out that badly, right? Time to make a name for yourself, something that. Exactly, exactly. Oh, and a huge body shot to oh, and again. start things up early on. And what money come back with a huge oh, body shot. Oh, my get goodness! Off. My goodness! Almost taking him out of the ring. Almost had to catch him there. He's telling his corner he can't go on. He doesn't believe he could do it. Nose covered in blood, and the referee has to call the fight. Amazing this place is being dead. You said it. He had to make a name for himself. I think he did just there. Without a shadow of a doubt. Awesome display. Beautiful right hand, and then beautiful two hands to keep himself inside the ring. Well done to both fighters. I mean, us the viewers, we can see <laughs> one hit while they knocked on money. But oh, I don't think look at that nose. It is crushed. Oh, my goodness. I don't think Lolin knows what hit him. Wow, just pure power and brute force. Why is the big dead segment record? Let's, let's have a look at that replay, please. Oh, my goodness. It's on the other side of his face. My goodness. <laughs> and that's what the cut shirk does to you. The traditional Thai cut shirk. That, uh, <laughs> that does not look good at all. Let's take a look at the replay once again. I give it to hit 30 seconds, that fight. Set it over that left hand. Oh, straight through the guard. Almost goes out of the ring and manages to hold himself. Pink has some support from the outside as well. Let's oh. have a look again. My goodness, what a shot. One more time. Bang! Incredible. I'm honestly surprised that didn't lay him out cold. <laughs> honestly. But are you surprised that nose went like that? Oh my goodness. You can see the indentation of Samming Det's fingernail on <laughs> the bridge of that nose. You asked for a knockout. You're full, Wally. You're full, Wally. The people are back. The winner is. Can you think so? Sam on the front row. Congratulations and welcome back. Sammy Day.
ยำนะครับแล้วก็พร้อมตะลุยกันที่แมตช์นี้แล้วครับคุณเดี่ยวครับดูทรงแล้วนี่นะฮะน่าจะได้เรื่องของหน่วยการความยาวนะแต่ท่านหนาท่านแน่นแล้วก็ต้องนักชกไทยคนนี้เลยครับทุกคนมาประกบคู่กันเรียบร้อยแล้วนะฮะเขาเหมือนเสือเสือที่นิ่งนิ่งพร้อมตะคุบอันนั้นนิ่งกันนิ่งไปนิ่งเมื่อกี้นิ่งเหมือนจะหลับแล้วพอรอจังหวะนี้มาเลยนะครับดูฉายาเขาก่อนแฟนๆร้องกรี๊ดเลยครับขุนศอกอัมมิดชัยยกภูมิพันมูลชัยยกภูมิพันมูลขุนศอกอัมมิดประเทศไทยWell, after that violent knockout, we're on to our fourth bout of the evening. In the white corner from Brazil, Mr. Luis Enrique de Souza Alves. You can just call him Luis Alves. 30 years of age from Sao Paulo, Brazil. 176 centimeters tall, with a professional record of 45 fights, 30 victories, 13 losses, and two draws. This fight is taking place at 72 kilograms. Here that um, Luis Enrique, a big name in Brazil. A lot of people know him and expect him to do well here, but he's never fought anyone like this man here, Sayo Pumpanmua. 38 years of age, turns 73 centimeters tall, fighting out of Pisadolok province in Thailand. His real name is Sakda Niem Hob. He has a professional record of 325 fights, 274 wins, 49 losses, and two draws. I mean, Sayo. A superstar in the Muay Thai world, it, it, isn't he? Just comes in with, you know, honors such as Rajadam Stadium champion, Thailand champion, Lupini champion, Thai fight champion, and of course he's a Isuzu Cup Super Fight winner as well, beating Chanachon back in 2014 with a superb elbow. You can imagine um, Henrik's corner though, or Luis Henrik. Told him to be wary of that elbow. We've seen yep. him knock so many people out with that. One of his favorite moves, of course. Just like Kevin said, he's moving in with that left elbow. Left or right, I think either way, <laughs> any of them could knock you out. He had, a, he had a quite a hiatus from Thai fight. When he came back, well, probably about two years ago now, he trimmed down a bit because he was actually fighting at 74, 75 kilograms. This might be one of the lightest we've seen him out in a long time at 72 kg. That's right, 72 kgs. I don't think, I think it's been a while since we've seen him uh, fight at 72 kgs. Yeah, for sure. Well, he was champion of Thailand at 147 pounds. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I think that might be a bit far, far too, too much, too <laughs> much for him right now. All right, boys and girls, first fourth bout of the evening in the white corner from Brazil, Luis Alves, and in the black corner, Sayok Pumpamua. Pumpamua, excuse me. Fourth bout of the evening and the fourth Kachuk fight. I believe most of our fights are Kachuk. 
Maybe maybe Sancha is the only non card shirt fight. That's right. Yeah. Here we Crowd go. Our favorite legend. Alves takes to the center of the ring. Looks in tremendous shape, doesn't he? <laughs> Absolutely. Built like a tank. Going for that high kick. kick. Early on now, Sayon. Trying to knock his opponent out early. And we always see that from Sayon. Trying to knock his opponent out early. Oh. Looking for that tiger uppercut elbow, which is fitting considering we're in a, tem a temple. Oh, almost caught with that right hook. Now, I know it's early on in the fight, but in Sayok terms, this is a slow start. Some of the swings and misses there from Alves. Beautiful. Oh, good uppercut. That cheeky little uppercut there for him. Oh, almost got caught there, Lewis Henry. He needs to be careful. Of course, Sayok, he's been through it all. He's beaten every opponent that's been put in front of him. And now, of course, at the age of 38, still taking on guys like Lewis Alves. Luis Henrique Alves. I mean, it says it says that Alves is only three centimeters taller than Sayok, but it looks a little bit bigger than that. I've got to say, the arm width, the length, looks like a, it's very long indeed. It looks like he could reach a lot further than Sayok can. It can definitely make a huge difference in the fight. I mean, Lewis might choose to fight on the back foot, which indeed he might be doing right now, and going for the right hook now, Sayok. There's that elbow attack. Oh, but he gets clipped. I absolutely love how Lewis reacted to getting hit just now. He tried to hit with some of his own blows back. Some huge heavy shots from Lewis. Going for the body shot now. Sayok. Early on in the fight, but I don't think Sayok's oh. figured out his opponent just yet. I think... Um, yeah, like I said, I think that range is a, is a little bit of a problem there for Sayok. He likes to get in close, doesn't he? Especially to throw those aforementioned elbows that you, that you said. Not an easy... Oh! Good left hand kick from Sayok! Swinging left hand! Swinging right body shot! There, that elbow was blocked by I Luis absolutely Alves. love how Sayok put those combinations together, going high, low, fist, elbow, knees, whatever, what have you. He puts them all in one combination, and that's absolutely beautiful. Making... Luis think what's going to hit him next. Again, Sayok trying to open up the body. Then he can go to the head. Now that, those kicks are what's working for him right now. When he hit there the again, left kick on, shot. When he hit the left kick onto the arm of Luis, he started to react, and now he's on the back foot. Oh, left hand from Sayok. Down goes Elvis. It was only a matter of time. I mean, when Sayok figured out his opponent, he smelled blood in the water, didn't, did he? Sayok looks phenomenal right now, boys and girls. Coming in, end of the round. Wow. Old school Sayok. Oh, yes. Luis Henrique and Suza Alves knocked down in that previous round of the first round. I'm sure we'll see a replay of that. There it is. Right. Oh, sorry, no, there you go. Three of his time left. I've got to say, Sayok rolling back the gears in that opening round. Really. Oh, yes, I mean, unlike the Sayok, it's a much more dangerous Sayok if you ask me. We're probably never going to see a Sayok with, uh, with, six, with a six pack like we did when he was <laughs> Reg Unknown champion. But ne this, this never is say never. Never say this never. This is the closest we've seen oh, to yes. the full fitness of Sayok in a while. But I just absolutely love it how Sayok just sort of waited for the opportunity, waited for the moment and tried to figure out his opponent. And so he finds oh. it. One shot by Sayok throwing left and right. Lewis had managed to stay on his feet there. And there we go, going back to the left kick that worked for him very well in the other round of the elbow. Just stuck in there. Lewis Henry looking a lot more focused in this round, but there again, good blocking from Alves. Sayok was primed and ready to throw that left elbow, but the Brazilian was able to just stuff it. And again, moving backwards that time. You can tell that Luis, though, he's a no-nonsense kind of fighter. Every time he gets hit, he wants to hit back with a harder shot. Yeah, that's always a good sign of a good fighter. Well, he's definitely conditioned, he's definitely in shape. But against Sayok. Yeah, look at that roll. Oh, good body shot. You see, every time that body kick connects, the hands drop. And that's when Sayok tries to move in. It's just experience showing right now from Sayok. He's been through it all. Oh, he's the eye. Ah, that was a bad pull. 
but sometimes it does happen. He's got jerk points, of course. It happens a lot more in MMA. Oh, yeah. But, of course, that's portable tie. It does happen. It's a combat sport. Oh, it's going on the attack. Yeah, there's a little opening here. Alves can take full advantage if he wishes to. <laughs> what a throw from Sayoff. The opponent down real force trying to establish some sort of dominance in the ring. Another beautiful combination sound there by Sayok. Put together very well and hit pick there. Lewis and Rick looking at his corner. Doesn't it quite know what to do, perhaps. Sayok moving in. And that's the last place you want to be in Sayok. On the ropes to Sayok. He's, he's going to show no mercy there. He's going to want to sneak one of those elbows in, as he always does in every single fight that we've seen. Beautiful body shots there with Sayok and his knee. Down the midsection, and that definitely hurt Luis Henry. Luis Henry now cornered up, shelled up, covering that body so it doesn't get any shots hit there. You can see the combination of those body shots taking its toll on Alves. He's starting to breathe heavily, he's starting to open that mouth to get some air back into his system. Once again, he's looking for that elbow. <laughs> you call it, we can do it. When Sayo stands up for an elbow, he's determined to hit it. That's another thing about getting tired, isn't it? Your ability to defend yourself diminishes. Oh, solid left knee. Beautiful tie by the tie. The tie legend. That is Sayok. End of round two. I don't speak any Portuguese, but I believe Louis Henry's quarter told him he's got to get a knockout in the third round. Good advice. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, easy to say, not easy to do. I think that's fair to say against someone like Sayok. As we take a look at the replay, I think that's just more dominant than Sayok. Yeah, Sayok, in the early stages of that round, he was head running, trying to find the target. And then when he realized that it was going to be difficult, he just went straight after that body. And for like two, three, two, two and a half minutes, it was all body strikes. Yeah, well, he's not just body strikes. I mean, he goes for the body, and then <laughs> he surprised you with a headshot as well. Let's see how this third and final round pans out. It's been a great fight. Not many expected this to go all the way. Oh, no. Especially after the first round. I mean, we saw Luis... Uh, Get knocked down. Yeah, yeah. knocked down. And some beautiful punches by the fighter in the black corner, Sayok. Now attempting to push Sayok back. Now doing yeah, quite a good job with that. He's going for it. Careful with those fingers. Nice low kick there from Luis. Beautiful uppercut once again. I mean, what a shot there. He really timed that perfectly. And placed it with perfection as well. Nice elbow thrown there by Sayong. It's the shot that he likes the most, and it's the shot that has taken out so many opponents. Lewis trying to come back with one of his own, but just too close. Oh, good right hand there from Sayok. Got clipped with a, what, two or three good right hands and left hands from the Brazilian, but he threw a right and, oh, oh, left high kick from Sayok. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think it's fair to say that Sayok, he's seen it all before. I mean, I'm not, sh I'm not sure if I've seen Sayok throw so many kicks in one fight before. Yeah, that's a fact. I mean, I haven't seen it so well. Of course, back, back in his right to the well, Lufini days. Day, of course, that tie fight was super I'm talking about. And his early tie fight days too, I'd imagine. <laughs> Very different now, but as I was going to say, when you fight Sayok at a younger age, you're not going to beat him with intelligence. There's just no way. True. Uh, I mean, the guy's got 325 fights. If you're going to try to outsmart Sayok, good luck with that. It's almost like trying to beat your own teacher at a test. There's no chance that's happening. Beautiful kick there from Sayok, who's now on the back foot. Not yeah. somewhere we're used to seeing Sayok on. So a lot more aggression from Alves. Sayok is happy to oblige him, really. Looking for that counter strike. A couple of hooks thrown and connected there from the Thai legend. He makes that mistake sometimes, Luis. I mean, he doesn't seem so committed to his offense. Slows down every now and then. Final stages of this third round as Sayok just wrestles his opponent down. Luis Alves though, very slow to get onto his feet, and that's usually a bad sign. The judges are not going to take that one lightly. Good 
left knee from Sayo. Straight down the middle, and of course, the knees that score the most, those piercing knees right down the middle. Oh, good uppercut there. Uh, elbow, and again, elbow. twice he caught him. Almost took Sayo off his feet. I don't know if you saw it, but his knees seem to buckle there. Sayo perhaps gasping for air right now. He's not exactly looking like how he did in the first and second round. Oh, he seems happy to, I wouldn't say lose the round, but be on the back foot and defend what he has right now. Instead of attacking. Yeah, but I think it's fair to say, I mean, the first round and second round, he looked comfortable. That's the end of our fourth battle of the evening. We will go to the judges' scorecard. But overall, tremendous fight, great battle. Alves did get knocked down in the first, but he, he came back, did himself some justice. And I thought he looked great in that third round. I agree. Really hit Sayok with some tremendous shots. Hope we get to see some of those in the replay because it, it absolutely deserves it. Here's that low kick early on in the round. Of course, Sayo going back to what worked for best. The left kick down the middle. All right, let's see what the judges say. ผลจะเป็นยังไงมาเนี่ยอยู่ในมือแล้วครับแล้วเปิดมาถึงกับเฮ้ยใช่อย่าเล่นกับผมแบบนี้ผมตกใจมาผู้ชนะนะครับของค
Okay, so before I say the name, we <laughs> did actually meet a person from Iran <laughs> before the uh, Thai fight event started, and this is how he told me it, you say this name. In the white corner, Ali Goodazian, 25 year old from Iran, 175 centimeters tall, with a professional record of 49 fights, 29 victories, with 18 losses and two draws. This fight will be taking place at 65 kilograms. I believe he said Ali Goodazian. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that to me. <laughs> we'll just call him Ali. Ah, there we go. <laughs> to his friend. So Ali is going to be in the white corner and in the black corner, Saifa Thought the One Room. His real name is Pongsakorn Choplam. He's 28 years of age, 176 centimeters tall. Fighting out of Surin province in the northeast part of Thailand. Has a total of 234 fights, 163 wins, 58 losses, and 13 draws. So 13 draws, you'd think it's a left way record. There. I know, right? <laughs> That's unbelievable. Have I seen um, Saifa sort of run on in in Thai fight before? No, another debutant. Yeah, the night of them. And we've still got a few to go. <laughs> Fifth bout of the evening. Ah, there you can see Kopi Kart saw Talon run. Yeah, Kopi Kart saw Talon run. Of course, um, 168 uh, pound Lupini champion. Big guy, and he's fought in Thai fight a few times. And he has. And he's done well. And um, we're, we're surprised that the he's not on this card. To be honest. Yeah, and neither is Teng Tengnung, so... He looks impressive each time. Every single time we've yeah. seen uh, Kompi Kart on the Thai Fight card. Love to see him back on. Oh, yeah, oh for sure. So anyways, of course, Kompi Kart. Only half a, half a win. <laughs> I just noticed that as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, fast start. Ali. Oh, right, I kick. Ali wants to go home right now. He, he's not waiting. Fourth position, not at all. But neither is Saifa, of course. He is swingy. Uh, don't you just love it when fights start like this? Back yeah. and forth action, hard hitting shots. It's all about weather in the storm right now for Saifa. Trying to say that Saifa, he's learning very quickly how the tie fight system works. You've got to go in, you've got to try to knock your opponent out quickly, and you've got to get that knockout bonus. Yeah, there is a knockout bonus from our sponsors over at Chang, but the way to get the uh, 100,000 baht is by doing a spinning back kick. To the head. To the head, yes. <laughs> yep, you heard it. Spinning back kick to the head. That's how you get the 100,000 bonus from Chang. Good hands there from Ali. We have seen one Iranian fire here tonight. He did very well. He came up short, but went the distance. Yeah, it did, it did go the distance. And I'm surprised we're here in a fifth bout already. And only one knockout so far. There, there is blood, but I'm not sure exactly where it's coming from. Yeah, neither do I. Is it over the left eyebrow of Saifa? I can tell. Good oh, high kick there! Goodness. Beautiful high kick there from Ali. Straight back up is Saifa. The referee decides that he's, he's got to count. Oh, he's giving him time. The referee didn't know whether to count or not. That gave more time for Saifa to recover. But is it going to be enough? Ali's going after him. Throwing those rolled hands. He was in the fight early. He's smiling there. Oh, oh beautiful my left goodness. Hook. There's no way he's getting up. There's no way he's getting up. And what a beautiful victory there for Ali Gutarzian. Absolutely fantastic. You can imagine this man over in Iran. Very impressed with what they've seen. And they're going to keep on, on watching him like they do with Kevin Soleimani. Well, I'm glad I learned his name now. <laughs> You're going to have to. You're going to have to. Wow. What a way to make a name for yourself. Impressive. Very, very impressive. Remember the name. Ali Goodassian, if that is how you say it. <laughs> still trying to figure that out. And Saifa still trying to figure out where he is right now. Very impressive victory there for Ali. Let's just take a look at that once again. I mean, he looked very comfortable in the ring from the, the first bell. Beautiful head kick there, I mean. I would have counted that, no doubt. No doubt within my mind. That should have been counted if it wasn't. He got up so quick, though, from that head kick. And then there, and there the go. hands with that body shot. Boom! 
straight on the button and down went Saifa. Just like that. They can look at it one more time. Or a couple more times. I don't mind. And a collector's item here at Tie Fight. Oh, yes. Yeah. Non tie knockout over a tie. Congratulations one more time. The Iranian Ali. Good action. ครับถือว่าเป็นคู่ที่มันดุเดือดอีกหนึ่งคู่นะครับครับแน่นอนเราจะประกาศผลกันฮะตอนนี้มายืนทั้งคู่แล้วนะครับเอาละครับแม้ชื่อเขาจะยาวแต่ตอนนี้จะถูกจารึกและจดจำอย่างแน่นอนนะครับผู้ชนะของเราในคู่นี้ The Winner is Ali Goradi Raja เพียงมันสามันเรียงสนุกสนานมากและมาพร้อมพลังเต็มเปี่ยมมากครับเป็นมาชุดมันด็อกเลยนะฮะสองคมกรีดนะฮะคืออาวุธเด็กของเขาขอเสียงต้อนรับขุนศึกบรรพศพิสัยก้องไกรสจเปียกอุทัยมวยคนแรกของเราขึ้นสังเวียแล้วนะครับสมาธิเป็นสิ่งสำคัญนะครับตอนนี้ขอนักกีฬาทำสมาธิสักครู่หนึ่งนะฮะมาแล้วนะครับ,รบ,รบ,รบเป็นกำลังใจใ,ให้ครับมาครับดูว่าใครจะได้ไปต่อมาครับคู่ต่อสู้ขอหน่อยฮะคนเดียวนักชกจากนครสวรรค์ต้องเจอนักชกจากพะเยาครับนี่คือหมัดซ้ายขวาเทียบเท่ากันเลยแฟนเหนืออยู่เยอะนะกดดันคู่แรกเหมือนกันนะนมาเลยกันดูดูกันนะครับคือเห็นหมัดยับอาจจะไม่ใช่หมัดยับอีกต่อไปบ้าเขาทั้งสายและขวาเขาทำได้ดีมากๆนะครับขอเสียงปรุงต้อนรับด้วยนี่คือจอมรหันแดนลานนาน้องโอชอภาพยักษ์ครับ
sixth bout of the evening and another debutant to introduce. Konkrai Sojo Piokutai, 25-year-old from Nakhon Sawan province here in Thailand, 179 centimeters tall with a professional record of 138 fights. 99 victories, looking for that 100th right here tonight. 34 losses and five draws. And now introducing his opponent fighting out of the black corner, Nong O Shou Ha Payak, or people may know him as Nong O Shou Ying Lun Gan Chang. His real name is Adison Jit Kam Kun, 21 years of age, 174 centimeters tall from Payao province in northern Thailand. He has a total record of 228 fights, 178 victories, 40 losses, and 10 draws. You gotta, you gotta wonder how much uh, the people of Northern Thailand or Lampang are gonna love this. Of course, um, Nong O Chohapayak coming from Payao province, which is not too far from Lampang. He is jacked. <laughs> oh yes, the perfect example of a human specimen. Look at that. His arms are the size of my legs. Some may make it different, but oh well. <laughs> <laughs> Currently ranked fifth in the world by the uh, World Muay Thai Organization and fourth by the WBC. This is another debut here at Thai Fight. And someone we've actually spoke about for a while now, how he would befit the Thai Fight mold. Of course, the real life action figure. That is, of course, Nong O. But we can't look past his opponent, of course. We can't look past Gongkai, so Job Bikotai. Thai. So when you hear this, this gym, so Job Bikotai, Thai, which fighter do you think about? Cool up Dam? No, I was thinking about Thai. Nah, of course, Kukul up Dam, Sojo Thai. Well, both of them, why not? Of course, <laughs> the left meteorite for those who are really in tune with the um, Muay Thai scene. Yeah, Kukul up Dam signed on one championship, of course, and Thai fights about what, Channel 7 most of the times, uh, most of the time now. I haven't seen him in a while, though. Yeah, it's yeah. been a while, huh? But <laughs> yeah, two, um, two stadium stalwarts, though. Anyways, but when you talk about the stadiums, of course, we've and seen Nong O in Lupini stadium multiple times and he's always impressive in mean, last fight i believe he captured the northern thai title was that knocking out the brazilian Th from that, that is correct in the, in, in the fourth yeah. round yeah he's been on a bit of a tear recently I, he's looked great <laughs> what else can you say he's looked absolutely fantastic and that is why he's here in the thai fight stadium right now the thai fight stadium the thai fight arena <laughs> <laughs> otherwise known as the yard of a temple <laughs> That's right, <laughs> the yard of the most beautiful temple here in Lampang. See the back muscles, half muscles on Nongo. I wonder if he's fought Ka Chuk before. No, I don't think he has. Sixth bout of the evening in the white corner, Konkrai Sojo Piokutai from Thailand. And in the black corner, Nongo Shoha Payak. Of course, we're here at the Wat Patat. Lampang Luang Temple. It's a, it's a must visit place, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely, 100%. Here in Northern Thailand. Beautiful. I mean, if you come to Lampang, you haven't been to this temple, you haven't been to Lampang. End of story, dot com. <laughs> <laughs> That's just the way it is. But of course, Thai versus Thai. That about like this never disappoints on Thai fight, does it? Very, very rare to see Thai versus Thai. You only see that when it's the Azuzu Super Cup. That's right. Or perhaps the final of a uh, Kachuk tournament yep, or exactly. another tournament, yeah. Something special has to happen, so for, for it to happen randomly like this is, uh, yeah, it's pretty special. Really it's excited fantastic. to see. fantastic. <laughs> excited to see this one. And Nong Oh starting up strong right away, and of course, and why not? He's got so much power, he had to, and he wants Gokai to know about it early on. Beautiful kick there from Gokai, but some returns. Oh, good, good elbows coming in there from Konkrai. Oh, excuse me, from Nong Oh early on, I meant. Yeah. Starting off at a very fast pace. Most, most people are, are expecting Nongo to do very well in this fight. He's the favorite, but let's not write off Konkrai right now. <laughs> Konkrai taking shots just like his teammates Ty and Gulab Damwood. Very strong athlete, very hard shin. Can Nongo knock him out? That is going to be the question, but maybe we'll see a Konkrai winning by knockout instead. Anything can happen in these catch up fights, and I mean anything. In normal glove fights, it's normal to see Nongo knock out his opponent. So to see with rope hands is a scary prospect. Oh, good elbow coming again from Gongrai! Oh, he hit a clean just now. Nongo hit Gongrai clean. Any other person, I think he would be out cold. I don't know. 
Anyways, I'd be at fault. <laughs> oh, right hand there. Looks like it's the elbows from Conkrite versus the hands of Nongo so far in this opening round. Of course, uh, Nongo utilizing the clutch hook. Start bullying, beautiful shots to the body, but gets taken down there by Conkrite or Jabigotai. Elbow coming in there. He might have caught him, you know, with that one. No, he looks okay. No, he looks fine. Oh, look at Kaminga from Nongo, looks for a leg kick. Body shot. Conkrai firing back. Back into the clinch they go. Yeah, that's what happens in that fight. Straight into the clinch, straight out the clinch. So far, I think it's fair to say in this first round, it's very even. Both fighters looking very good, and each one of them at one point can have the advantage. Like sitting out with the one twos once again and putting on a straight knee. Absolutely beautiful and fantastic combination put together by Nong Osho Hapaya. Oh, left hook there from Conkrai. Northern Thailand versus Central Thailand. Not a matchup we see quite often. Northern Thailand, Central Thailand. Payao versus Nakon Sawan. Oh, good elbow. Nice knee down the middle once again from the fighter from Northern Thailand, Nong Oh. Back to the center of the ring, a goal! Sneaky left hand and a right there! But here come those power shots from Nong O. Oh. I'm just surprised by how well Nong O oh took those two shots just now from Gong Rai. It's like we've got a battle of speed versus strength. Oh, absolutely. Here comes Nong O. Oh. Pushing back Gong Rai. end of round one. Fantastic action here at Thai Fight Lampang. From the first round, as you see there, Kong Kai with a beautiful left hook that connects really well. Oh, Nong Oh. Well, Nong Oh, he did have some really hard shots of his own. Take a look at this one. Mark there, but I see many shots get through for sure. It's a relatively close round there, Kevin. Very you close. You put your neck on the line and give it to a fighter who will say what's that round. I'm going to give it to him. I'm going to tell you straight <laughs> up. Okay. I can't decide there. Very close match. I would edge it just to non go based on the aggression. But yeah, it was very close. Very, Closer very than close. I expected, if I'm <laughs> going exactly. to be honest. <laughs> but of course, when fighters from the stadium, when they come into the TIE fight, or into TIE fight, I was about to say TIE fight arena once again, but when they come into the TIE fight, they take time to adjust to yep. the three round format or the hard hit action that TIE fight fans want to see. But these two are doing a oh, fantastic job. And there hand. we go. First the knock down. Oh, that looked like a jab. <laughs> Honestly, that was... You know what they say, you blink and you miss it, and that's exactly what it did. I've got to see that once again on the replay. My goodness. Going for the kill. Good knees there from Nong Oh. Wow, Nong Oh started this round really, really well. Another left jab, another right. Oh, strong right hand there. Coming from... Oh, my goodness. And the power that this man possesses is ridiculous. Not absolutely amazing. What a debut from Nongo Shohapayak, the man from Northern Thailand, the man from Payao, the man from Lana, Thailand. He is ripped, he is jacked, and he is on the attack. Thai fight welcomes Nongo.
ิ่มแบตการแข่งขันเนี่ยเพราะใจสู้จริงๆนะแน่นอนครับโอ้โหแบตนี้คู่นี้สนุกมากนะฮะหลักหนังจากที่ดูรีเพลแล้วเห็นไหมว่านี่แหละพลังคนหนุ่มครับรถถังชนรถถังนะสู้กันแบบไม่บุกสลายกันเลยแต่ว่าแน่นอนครับเราก็ต้องรู้ผลกันฮะปรับกันผลตรงนี้ครับและผู้ชนะของเราเดอะฟินเนอร์เรสน้องโอชอห้าพยักยินดีด้วยนะครับ Congratulations Once again to Nong Ocho Ha Phaya here making his debut and not his first fight at all here at Thai Fight Lampang. Thai Fight, ha, do noi ka the, nan nan thang ku, ok awut kan nak nak, na bok le wa. Ko sieng ton rap the Daredevil Dylan already. ฟิตตรงนี้นี่ไม่ธรรมดาแน่นอนจะยืนจัดกัน3ยกหรือไม่ต้องเจอกันกับคนคนนี้ในพิกัดน้ำหนัก69กิโลกร,รัมต้องบอกไว้ก่อนว่าคนนี้เป็นหนึ่งในนั้นที่อยู่ต้นต้นของพิกัดน้ำหนักนี้และแพ้น้อยมากชนะน็อกเยอะมากเรียกได้ว่าขาโหดดีกว่าถ้าเขาเขี้ยวเนี่ยเขี้ยวเขาทั้งแหลมคมสุดยอดฮะนี่คือหนึ่งในแชมป์อีสุสุคัสออนิวอีสุสุดีแม็กพลานุภาพไร้ขีดจำกัดขอเสียงปรบมือดังๆสลามร้ายแห่งเมืองชนปตทวรุจินวงกบาปตทวรุจินวงฉลาดร้ายแห่งเมืองชนประเทศไทยชนิดาฟอยชนิดาคิดโอ้หง
in the white corner from France, Dylan off Lady, nicknamed the Daredevil. 175 centimeters tall with a professional record of 38 fights, 29 victories with seven losses and two draws. So quite the nickname if you're gonna be taking on PTT. Don't think he'll don't think he'll scare PTT too much with PTT's experience. Yep. Of course, still young, 24 years of age, PTT. This is the seventh fight of nine scheduled fights here tonight at Thai Fight. Still to come, we have Kitty and then Sanchai. Of course, the bizarre thing about this fight is that it's with gloves. Mm. The rest of our fights yeah. have been with uh, the card shirt well, the whole time. Just not having our packet that is supposed to be a card shirt, but it is what it is. And now introducing Dylan's opponent in the black corner, PTT Wo Gutiawong. His real name is Wan Chalem Fang Dang Gang. 24 years of age, 178 centimeters tall, fighting out of Padia City, Chonburi Province, Thailand. He's had a total of 156 fights, 125 victories, 29 losses, and one draw. Now let's just remind ourselves where you come from. Padia, right. <laughs> <laughs> so that's exactly Are you why. Are going to show some favoritism here to PTT? Oh, no. No, okay, good. Going to be professional here, <laughs> no biased opinions. PTT, of course, he. Um, where did he get his name again? I mean, his parents sell propane, I believe. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. His parents are selling propane in the Soy Tempercent. I think during, Co Road, excuse during, me. during COVID, he actually started a mooping. That is right. Yeah, I've ordered from him a couple yeah. of times. Any good? Oh, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> that meat was pulverized. If you love, if you love pork <laughs> on a stick, <laughs> there's no better place to get in Paddy than probably PTT store. Although it will turn your hair orange, is what I've been told. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> Ever since he started it. <laughs> All right, boys and girls. Seventh bout of the evening in the white corner from France. We have Dylan off Lady. And of course, in the black corner, PTT for Rujira Wong. So that's how PTT got his name, yeah. In the um, oh, his, his parents selling propane. <laughs> 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 Got to go back to that one. And PTT, for those that don't know, it's a, uh, I would say petrol gas company in Thailand. Yep. And that's where the name PTT or Potato in Thai came from. <laughs> now it's quite bizarre. That's going through so many fights already, and this being the first fight with gloves on on tonight's Thai fight show. Yeah, and speaking of propane, we're um, an explosive start here from both fighters. Good left hook there from off lady. PTT, he has to be very careful. He's been knocked out here on Type Fight before. Yeah, trains out of Venom Camp in, um, in Patia. I believe both him and Kitty are there right now. Good little kick there from the French fighter oh, in the box. white corner. Good boxing show there from a lady who's actually got some blood dripping down from his nose. Another shot coming in there from PTT. Two right hands straight down the pipe hole. Dylan very impressive with his combinations that he threw just now, but it's not going to face PTT at all. He's used to being in wars. He's used to being in these sort of battles. Oh, another right hand there from PTT. He's found a home for that. Trying to get a hold of his neck there. I mean, PTT, he's one of those fighters that before he joined Thai Fight, believe it or not, he was a clinch and knee fighter. Amazing. <laughs> and now he's um, coming to Thai Fight. It's absolutely changed his style. He's a very... Hard-hitting individual. Beautiful body shot there from PDT and a knee down the middle. Dylan will not like that knee whatsoever. Yeah, I think off ladies, if it was his decision to go with the gloves, smart decision. I have to agree with that because the card shooks can be unforgiving. Oh, but good right elbow there from PTT. Never doubt PTT with the gloves, ever. Going for that elbow now. <laughs> I don't think the elbows require any gloves or any sort of protection, does it? Stalking his opponent. Good up at there from PTT, going up with the right hand. Looking for that knee. There's the elbow and a right elbow. Off Lady fighting back though. I'm very impressed by how Off Lady is oh. about to stay on his feet. He's cut over the eyebrow now. That's right, the right eyebrow. You don't want the blood to get into his eyes. There, beautiful elbows there, thrown from PTT. And a body shot. That body shot. The body shot hurt Dylan, absolutely. There's without a shadow of a doubt. Dylan not even fighting back anymore, my goodness. Yes. Yes. He can't go on to fight like this, there's no way. He's got to start hitting back. PTT 
Ramsey, of course, moving forward, hoping to get his opponent to the corner, and he does. There's that right hand and a right knee combination there. Very slick from the TIE fighter. Good combinations. Just by the way PTC throws his knees, you could tell he was a knee fighter back in his yeah. day. Yeah. Well, back in his day, he's only 24. Aflaney attempting that elbow, but nothing really doing. I'm starting to think that PTC is enjoying this oh, moment nice. right now. Right kick, right hand combination there. End of the round. Menacing orange hair there from PTT, uh, reminding me of Chucky. Beautiful looking round there from PTT, the TIE fighter, bringing out all the combinations, finding the mark, slicing and dicing the Frenchman. A lady started well, to be fair. Oh, he plays combination very well in the first round, yeah. but uh, and towards PTT. the end of that round, <laughs> it's all I think PTT. what happened really was a lot of those body, body shots took their toll, sapped all the air out, and it was just the target practice really from there, from there on out for, for PTT. So the question is, will it be more of the same in this next round, or... Good camera shot there. Just figure out something. Yeah, the cut doesn't look good. Not too much Vaseline on it. <laughs> Not as much as uh, Dilly would have liked, probably. Beautiful one two to start things off from oh. PTT. PTT is out for blood. He spells blood. He wants to knock his opponent out. There's no doubt about it. And when does PTT not want to knock out his opponent? That is the real question. Yeah, if Adam was here, he'd be saying, oh, it's the, uh, the TNT of PTT. <laughs> I like that one there. Uppercut's raining in. And a right hand again. I'm really again looking for that elbow. He's not just a sitting duck. He is trying at least. Yeah, and he's done a good job there to get out of that corner. The last thing you want is to be cornered by PTT, who could do a lot of work on anybody. Oh. Beautiful elbows there, thrown once again from PTT, who continues to stalk his opponent. Dylan trying to hit back, but instead eats a knee oh, to the face. Oh, beautiful elbow. It's almost like our lady is trying to, trying to get PTT to move forward, like, yoo-hoo, yoo -hoo. But, but then he does it, and then it's an elbow. Then it's a body exactly. shot, just like that. Then it's a cracking right hand, like that. And another cracking hand. It seems like he's trying to right play a counter game against PTT. He's having none of it, obviously. Nice uppercut there from PTT, and Dylan still remains on his feet. Absolutely incredible from the French fighter, showing tremendous heart to keep on going. Go for those low kicks there, but unfazed, PTT. Absolutely unfazed, and that's a beautiful elbow once again thrown left and right. Oh! oh! Elbows will do that. It was just a matter of time. I mean, he's been taking so much shots. The defense is starting to lack. PDT, and KO victory in the second over. round. Second round knockout. Let's take the ginger warrior. The orange or ginger? <laughs> Very impressive once again from PTT. It just shows he doesn't need the card check to knock anyone out, no. Yeah, there's no wrapping on the elbows, but there is fire on top of that man's head. And there is fire in every shot he delivers. PTT does it again here at Thai Fight. ครับผมเอาละครับมาแล้วครับเอากับกับประกาศผลนะฉลองผมสีส้มทรงใหม่หน่อยนะฮะอ่าให้กับพนทรนะครับแน่นอนว่าผู้ชนะของเราเดอะ
ปลายปีที่ไทยไฟฟ้าทะลุนะฮะคู่ปลายปีที่ไทยไฟฟ้าทะลุนะฮะกําลังจะทําให้ทุกคนได้เห็นกับตายครั้งว่ามันสะใจ
the penultimate fight of the evening and it is a rematch from the last tie fight in December 2021. There you can see in the white corner from Brazil, Thiago Teixeira, fighter nickname is The Grand because he is one big dude. Professional record of 96 fights, 74 victories, 21 losses and one draw. The Sao Paulo native is a former three-time world champion. This fight will be taking place at 75 kilograms. And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the black corner. As you can see on your screens right there. Kitty Sotho Man Nakon Rayong, or formerly Kitty Sotho Dan Rayong. His real name is Dinapop Sai Chon. 22 years of age, 182 centimeters tall. Fighting out of Chantaburi province in eastern Thailand. He has a total of 95 fights, 84 victories, 11 losses and zero draws. Of course, Gitti comes into this match as a two-time Max Muay Thai tournament champion. Both in the cut shook style, so he should be very much in place right here. Of course, I've seen all over social media, Thiago Teixeira has been writing that he is more ready for Gitti now, but you got to ask yourself, is anyone ever truly ready for Kitty? Very true. Saying that though, this weight, 75 kilograms, is heavy for Kitty. That is correct. I think it's the heaviest we've ever seen Kitty fight. But I'm, pre um, I'm pretty confident that Kitty could make 72.5 kilograms very middleweight very easily. So for him to be fine at 70, I'm not. Maybe he could even make 70 because he's quite a slender fellow. I know he's tall, but 75. Well, we'll see. Kitty, though, 22 years old. Of course, he may still be growing. True. <laughs> so we never know. Thiago Teixeira from Brazil in the white corner. And of course, Kitty Soto. Manacon Rayong in the black corner. Hey, Got to be very excited about this rematch here. Of course, whenever there's a rematch, someone always has something to prove. And Kitty usually wants to start off the fights really, really quickly. Now, we have seen Teixeira here at Thai Fight many a time. I think Kitty was stunned by that hand there from Teixeira, almost trying to take him out of the ring, seemed like anyways. It, let's just say if there wasn't any ropes there, <laughs> they'd, be both, they'd both be flying out of the ring right now. One of the things about Teixeira is that he's very, very strong and has an amazing chin on him. It's not easy to knock this man out at all. Oh, absolutely not. And he has heaps of experience within the Muay Thai ring. And he fought a touch check a few times as well. And he's also won at Thai Fight. In, in Pattaya, he defeated Pascal Schrock in one of the, uh, in, in the semi-final. That's right, and then in the next round of the final, of course, he faced off against uh, Kitty, where he was unsuccessful by points where many people might think Kitty could have lost already in the round, first round and second round by knockout. Let's just say it's very rare that someone gets into the ring against Kitty and uh, survive all three rounds. And Thiago is one of those people. Indeed, yeah. Did go to a point. Decision left it in the hand of the judges in December. Will either Kitty or Teixeira want to leave it into the hands of the judges here tonight? What is oh, it? swing and a miss there from Teixeira because Kitty jumps in. Well, what is clear early on in the fight is that um, Kitty, someone who we always see, loves to lunge at their opponents, loves to start swinging. He's very, let's say, very, he's playing safe against Teixeira. Yeah, he is. He's very, he's very calm. He's looking for those openings where usually he doesn't care. He just rushes in. Oh, sees what he can find. Little left hand there from Teixeira. But yeah, you can see from their previous match that Kitty is showing him respect. Yeah, absolutely. And why not? He knows the power that Tiago possesses and also he knows the experience that Tiago has. I mean, he is so thick, isn't he, Teixeira? His back and his, and his chest is huge. Absolutely, I think he can go <laughs> more than 10 rounds without a shadow of a doubt. Look at this, Kitty backing up into the corner. Never thought I'd say that. Oh, good uppercut there from Teixeira. Just saying that, it's a very weird thought seeing Kitty back up into the corner. We never really see that happen until, well, right now. Perhaps maybe the weight advantage is getting to him right now. Well, not exactly a weight advantage, but 75 kilos of uh, weight, as we discussed earlier, that Kitty's never fought it. And beautiful shots there by Thiago. Hey, good opening round there from Teixeira. Fantastic. Stay with us here at Thai Fight. This is the 
start there from Kitty. Surprised us both. Shera did really well in that round. He pushed forward. Caught Kitty with some good shots. Kitty did catch and take Shera a few times. But overall, personally, I think Tech Shera did better than Kitty in that round. In that opening round. I mean, the forward movement, the aggression, you got to give it to Thiago. But the more accurate shot to keep the Kitty. True. So it depends how the judge would want to score this one. But look at that. Might be what it's going for Kitty, in my opinion. But yeah, not the Kitty that we're used to at all. Absolutely not. The more safe, the more caution. Kitty. Let's see how things change in the second round. Goldfire's almost at a stalemate here, not wanting to do too much so far. There we go, Tiago with the first shot, but just misses. Kitty gets out of the way, just fighting the referee. He wants to see more action, and yeah. so do we. And I think, you know, can you really blame Tixera right now? You, you can't blame either fighter. I mean, one shot, and that's all it takes. Smiling there as the referee tries to separate both of them. The referee giving Kitty a telly off. Attacking after the referee has told him to um, break out of the clinch. Beautiful kicks there from Kitty. Two in a row hitting the mark. Well done there from Kitty. And an elbow. Oh, looking for that elbow. Did he catch it? Perhaps he did. Again, Kitty back into the corner there, but he used that right kick to move away. Really fighter. Whatever Kitty hits him with looks unfazed. It feels very edgy right now. I feel like the atmosphere surrounding this place is a little bit on edge as well. It's a very bizarre feeling, i got to say, for a Kitty fight. Usually, a, you, you see a lot of excitement. You see him throwing a lot of shots. This Kitty, though, much more defensive than we used to see. Nice kick there from Kitty. Tiago Tixera, though, doing a good job. Staying composed, moving forward. See that again, Kitty looking for an opening. And not making him himself, really. I mean, the word counterpuncher. We never think of this term when we think about Kitty. Never. But in this round, so far, he's been absolutely just that, a counterpuncher. Yeah, and it's one shot and then moving away. One shot, oh, did he get caught there with that high kick? One shot, then moving away. Well, whether he got caught or not, he definitely hit that roundhouse kick to the body. Made what each fighter not wanting to make the first mistake. That's referee not having yeah. it. The referee wants to seize some action. As do the fans. Yeah, absolutely. Good aggression there shown from Thiago. Kitty still in the defensive, still trying to hit back with something. A very nice kick there by Kitty. Looking for that elbow. Left hand, but. Red left hand actually connected there. No real power behind it, though. Beautiful composure from Thiago, maybe. Maybe Kitty's just finding his groove now in the second round. Going for the high kick now, Kitty. Just making his opponent miss and countering devastating effect. Chess match. Who'd have thought it here at Tie Fight? Very much more of the same in that second round. Kitty again on the back foot. Looking for a way to counter to Sharon. Johnny Bear, he has been doing it successfully. He has been very accurate in that last round. I don't know. I think I think both men have not found what they're looking for to finish right now. Well, I've seen Yago be well hitting and missing quite a lot. And for Kitty, he's been very accurate in that last round, just like the kick we see here. This is there from Yago. I'm, <laughs> I'm giving that round for Kitty. Hello. I don't know what the judges are thinking. Exactly. But we're going in right in into the uh, third and final round now. Okay. Referee already telling them, come on now. <laughs> but to be fair, it's the it's Kitty who's moving backwards. Dick Sharer isn't. That is true. That is true. That's a big punch there already by Kitty in this third round. Are we seeing the old Kitty now in this third round? Well, that's exactly what the fans want to see as well. Kitty oh, getting good right kick to the body there from Dick Sharer. That might be his best shot of the of the fight so far. Oh, absolutely. Kitty perhaps being told by and his again. corner that he needs to start moving forward, needs to fight oh, like elbow a normal Kitty. Kitty. Throwing a shot once again after the referee telling them to, to separate. Perhaps not the best of ideas. Kitty, Kitty now trying to move forward, trying to get a shot in. 
going for the jumping kick there and getting punched by Kashira, but it's ordering. more aggressive. This and is again. the Kitty everyone came to see. This is the style <laughs> that we want to see. Kitty fighting the ring. Like once again, as Kashira's corner tells Kashira to start moving forward, start pushing, and I believe he's been pushing all throughout the fight. Except yeah. this round, this round, Kitty has come to life. Style shown by Kitty right now, or I would say beautiful, but yeah, it's, I was the say, it's, the, it's the style we want to see from Kitty. I say the opposite, I'm saying very scrappy to be honest. <laughs> oh, elbow wall! <laughs> elbow wall, cut choke wall, whatever it is, it's awesome. This third round has come to life. Oh, good elbow there from Kitty. Absolutely that was fantastic. beautifully timed. I'm not sure, is it Kitty? And there getting... is blood on top now of the, of the head of Tiago Teixeira, this blood pouring down. It could be, if it's going into the eyes, that could be bad news. Oh, yes. Teixeira again looking for that left hook. Well, Kitty came to life with this round, and it's absolutely spectacular. It's exactly what we want to see from Kitty. Kitty, of course, one of the few fighters who are actually fighting on Taipei who actually grew up in the three round Muay Thai. That's true, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Good knees from both fighters. Oh, exactly, exactly. Oh, another beautiful right elbow there from Kitty. He's found a home for that for that elbow strike. And yeah, a cut on the left side of, um, or just over the left eyebrow of Teixeira. It's not, it's not going to do him much damage at all. Another good left hook there from Teixeira, but another elbow strike from Kitty. And again, oh. Very different now in this third round. Thiago much more defensive. Kitty on the attack, and that's the end of our fight. Great sportsmanship shown after another hard-fought battle in that third round by both Kitty and Teixeira. We're going to go to the judges' scout cards again. Six rounds in the books for both these fighters. And we're going to come down to who wanted it most. What do you think, folks? Kitty, or was it Teixeira's fight this time? Let's find out. ตั้งสองฝ่ายต่างมั่นใจนะฮะแต่เป็นยังไงครับจากคณะกรรมการมาแล้วครับแล้วผู้ชนะของเราได้แก่เอาหรือดำดีครับเอาหรือดำดี
วันนี้ขึ้นมาแล้วสาวสาวข้างเวทีกรีดครับไม่หรอกแต่เดี๋ยวเจอโคตรมวยก่อนเดี๋ยวเจอโคตรมวยก่อนใส่แมสจะกรีดขนาดกรีดคนละแบบกันนะฮะนักมวยชาวไทยคนนี้เราไม่ต้องบอกกันมากมายแล้วว่าเป็นใครนะฮะโคตรมวยแห่งสยามแน่นอนนะคนนี้มีทั้งความเทพความน่ารักบนเวทีตรงนี้เหมือนสนามเด็กเล่นของเขาโอ้โหจะว่าอย่างนั้นก็ได้เขาก็วิ่งเล่นแล้วเขาก็วิ่งออกนอกสังเวียนไปเลยมาอยู่ในนี้ครับโดยการจะครบ3ยกนะครับปรบมือดังๆต้อนรับเลยนี่คือโคตรมวยแห่งสยามแสชัยพีเคแสชัยมวยไทยเย่เย่You've been waiting for this moment your whole life, right? Oh yes, <laughs> every single commentator I've waited for this moment. All right, folks, thank you for sticking with us here at Thai Fight. This is the last fight of the night, and you can see in the white corner, Mr. Maxim Branis, the Phoenix, 23 years of age from Israel, 174 centimeters tall, with a professional record of 49 fights, 29 victories, 18 losses, and two draws. I've been very, waiting my whole life for this very moment right here. Don't screw it up now. <laughs> <laughs> Getting to introduce the this legend, the man. I mean, the face of boy, Thai Sanchai, PK Sanchai Moi Sai Jim. Real name, Super Chai Sanpong. 41 years of age, 263 centimeters tall. Fighting out of Maha Sarakan province in the northeastern part of Thailand. He has a total of 372 fights, 321 victories, 49 losses, and two draws. Sanchai, of course, a four-time Thai fight champion, and one of the few fighters to win the Sports Writers Association of Thailand Fight of the Year award uh, more than once. Of course, the others being Pan Payak, Anuwat, and Gansak. All right, boys and girls, final fight of the 
evening. What a great evening it has been. Max Branis in the white corner from Israel. And Sanchai, PK Sanchai Muay Thai Jim in the black corner. Legendary. Any idea who that is? Because uh, uh, Sanchai posted about him on his um, Facebook or his IG. And I wasn't actually sure who it was. <laughs> Someone famous, I assume. Well, all I see is Sanchai right now, I've got to say. <laughs> <laughs> got great hair, whoever it is. Absolutely. <laughs> of course, Max Brannis. Known in the Channel 8 Muay Thai circuit. Been doing a good job there, but um, as we said early on in the, on the show, a big step up to take on Sanchai, PK Sanchai Muay Thai Gym. Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Currently riding a 60 fight win streak. Yeah, just let me repeat that. 60 wins in a row for the legend, Sanchai. 60 wins in a row at oh. the age of 41. It's absolutely amazing. And so Sanchai, of course, doing what he does best. He plays around early in the fight, but later on in the fight, he doesn't play around at all, does he? Tall. Oh, and that's what you do when you're tall. You take him down. Superb. Absolutely superb from Sanchai PK, Sanchai Muay Thai Jim. Kick there from Max Brannis, who's trying to attack Sanchai Will at this moment, doing a good job of it, but don't think he'll be able to keep the pace going. And another sweep there from Sanchai, absolutely beautifully done. Max, 11 centimeters taller than Sanchai, and it shows. But when has that been a problem for Sanchai ever? No, he's, well, he's, he's used to it. He's been pretty much put in every situation you can think of when it comes to fighting taller fighters. Even at stadium level, right? They always used to put him against fighters with more weight. Oh, yeah. I mean, against Pet Chu, against Yon Wicha. The list goes on. It's again now. Even in his last fight that he lost at the stadium with Pet, -Pet Merricott. Oh, he's yeah. <laughs> pretty much a giant for a Thai fight. Absolutely. A much more, well, a big height and weight advantage for his opponents usually in, in Lupini Stadium. But of course, now he's been fighting a Thai fight, and the weights are always equal. The only difference is Sanchai has been giving a, away a lot of height. He's also giving a lot away a lot of age right now as well. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> last time we saw, last time he fought. Oh, did he actually fight at the, the last one at Kao Or? I don't December? believe so. No, no, he didn't. No. no, he had COVID last time, if you remember. Yeah, correctly. that's right. So he's been out of the ring a while now. Well, in terms of Sanchai, he's been out of the ring. For a good, yeah, I'm not sure when it was. It's, 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 it's not about how long he's been out of the ring. It's, been, it's about how long he's been in the ring. Yeah. He's been fighting since he was six or seven years old. And now at the age of 41, still going. Looking for that overhand left. Just missing with that low kick there. Sanchai smiles a little bit as Max Brennan is trying to capitalize on the situation. He needs to attack, though. Nice body shot there from Sanchai once again. Target in the midriff for the Israeli fighter. Good inside kick there. Grabs a bit low there from Max Brannis. Sanchai telling him off right away. End of round one. because you can't get anyone to, to replicate what he does. Absolutely. Not in a million years we're ever going to see anyone replicate the way Sanchai fights. Yes, I so can't true. see it. So true. He is an absolute one-off. And that's why it's such a privilege to be doing this right now. Exactly. And here we go, second round. Let's see what Max Brannis can do differently in this round here compared to the first. I like the way that Max is using his, his height, his range, to keep Sanchai at bay. What I've always wondered is, what exactly does Sanchai's corner tell him? Can you actually tell him anything at all? Good block there from Sanchai. <laughs> Very used to seeing Sanchai play around his opponents every now and then, but does that get into the heads of his opponents? Does that make them mad? Does lose the concentration, perhaps? Max is still looking very composed in there. 
head mentally with this moment for a very long time. This with that low kick now, Sanchai. Not often we see someone making Sanchai miss, but a beautiful swing there. Once again from Sanchai. I've counted three now. Sanchai still on the attack. Good kick there from Sanchai. Once again. Blocking. Body shot there from Sanchai. Oh, good hand. Left hand to the head. Max almost catches him with a right high kick, though. Sunshine moving in. Just loving how Sunshine blocks uh, Max's kicks. Almost, as you said, did not block one of them. Nice block there. A body shot there from Sunshine, forcing Max Brennan to the ropes. Trying to go for a high kick there, but a good, well, I would say, block there. Not hitting completely by Sunshine. by Sanchai. Max, so if he wants to have some sort of advantage, he's doing something different, but saying that, I think Sanchai's seen it all. Yes, very true. I don't think there's anything anyone could do that's different from what Sanchai's not seen before. Do you think Max has shown him too much respect right now? Because in the first round, he was attacking more. Absolutely, he, he put a lot of combinations together, and now he's trying to middle kick Sanchai, which isn't going very well for him. End of the second round. Previous round. Much better second round over the Sanjay. But you know, Brannis has been a difficult puzzle for uh, the Sanjay to, to figure out. But in that second round, we saw a lot more aggression from Sanjay and more of Bra Max on the back foot, which I don't think helped him a lot, to be honest. Maybe just Sanjay bring out his opponent, which he always does. I guess that's the thing about Sanchez, you're always, you, you can never stop thinking about what he can do. Unless you concentrate on what you can bring to the table. I think that's what happened in the second round, he was more worried about what Sanchez can do to him. Rather than what he can do to Sanchez. Exactly, yeah. And I think if you do want to pull off a miracle, if you do want to do what 60 others can't, you have to, you have to be a little bit more aggressive. I believe he got... I but think easier. <laughs> I think more, more than 60, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well. Really, he says on his record, 321 wins. Let's go, the third round now. Sanchai in the black corner and Max Brannis. Ah, well, white. he's going for it. Oh! Sanchai, of course, still has some of his tricks up his sleeve there. Nice kick there from Sanchai, absolutely hitting the mark. Beautiful. And for Sanchai, Muay Thai is like riding a bicycle for him. Sorry to those that don't know how to ride a bicycle. <laughs> there from Sanchai once again. Left hand there from Sanchai. I think Brannis acknowledged that one. Oh, good right hand there. Absolutely beautiful. I don't that think Sanchai that, expected that at all. Yeah, that wobbled Sanchai. So Brannis, Max Brannis, still on the back foot. I think he's trying to fight smart rather than show how much he wants this victory. Good kick there from Max Brannis, though, hitting the mark. Oh, Sanchai good body shot there Sanchai. And there we go, that's the aggressive style. We want to see more from Max Brannis. And it's Sanchai with a kiss. Not sure if you've seen that. <laughs> Don't think Max Brannis enjoyed that one too much in the middle of the fight. Oh, good right hand again there from Brannis. Really found a home for that right hand. Yeah, that's a very good job. I don't think it's been a while since I've seen someone connect. Good body shot from Sanchai. Connect punches to Sanchai in a long time. Indeed. Max Brannis doing a very good job with that, whether it's a jab or the right hand. Nice body shot there from Sanchai and another body kick. Sanchai, nice invasion and a beautiful counter. From oh. the legend, a head kick to Sanchai. Don't think I expected to see that in this fight. Well done there for Max Brannis. Very impressed with Brannis. Oh, absolutely. It's without a shadow of a doubt. I do want to see him back on the Thai fight event once again. He's displayed a high level of Muay Thai IQ. 
show that he's very determined to go in against this legend here, Sanchai. To the corner of Brannis is screaming at him. He wanted to finish strong. End of the third and final round. We'll go to the judges' scorecards for a decision. เอาละครับไทยไฟลำปางของเรานะฮะที่มาจัดนะฮะที่ตรงข้างหน้านะครับประทาดลำปางหลวงตรงนี้นะครับจารึกไว้เลยว่าโอ้โหสิ่งนี้เราได้มาดูร่วมกันตรงนี้จากคนทั่วประเทศแล้วก็ชาวลำปางและจังหวัดใกล้เคียงกันด้วยนะครับนี่แล้วก็คู่สุดท้ายแล้วคู่นี้ถือสุดยอดมากๆเลยนะครับคอยสมศักดิ์ศรีมากคู่สุดท้ายโอ้โหก็สนุกเหมือนไม่แพ้กันบอกเลยว่าในคนมารอดูทั้งโคตรมวยและคู่ต่อสู้ยังไม่หนีไปไหนนะฮะยังอยู่กันจนสุดทางจริงๆขอบคุณทุกคนมากนะครับและคู่สุดท้ายประกันผลมาแล้วครับ The winner is Kuki Susi. แบบนี้ก็ต้องบอกว่าฝ่ายขาวหรือฝ่ายดำ Black or White. ผู้ชนะคือสาชัยพิเกศสาชัยมวยไทยยิมโอ้ยไทยเลยขอแสดงความยินดีด้วยนะครับ